topics today include the apartment we rented, hiring a car, Bob's birthday, sea trials, nightlife, and some very hungry seals that we saw. Greetings from Cape Town. Today is Tuesday the 31st of March and we're on the fifth day of lockdown here in Cape Town. It's pretty strange, the whole marina is deserted. We took a little walk into the food shop yesterday and I think we only met about two people on the way there in a place which is normally heaving with tourists. Well, I'm here to help my friend Bob fit out and deliver his lovely new Leopard 40 catamaran to Barbados. But as the way things stand at the moment, I'm not sure when we're going to be leaving. We are in, uh, we're impounded effectively. We're not allowed to leave the dock. We have not got the paperwork signed off for the boat. So we're here until further notice. But I'm, I can think of worse places to be. The, uh, the supermarket is well stocked. There's only one snag. We're not allowed to buy alcohol. But we were given 48 hours notice. So inevitably there was a big queue at the supermarket to stock up before the ban came in. It's funny because a week ago it was toilet rolls that were in demand and then all of a sudden it switched. There were loads of toilet rolls that nobody wanted and everyone wanted wine and beer and spirits and everything else. Harold Wilson said a week is a long time in politics. Well in coronavirus terms it's a lifetime. Back on February the 8th, Captain Bob booked our flights to Cape Town when the virus was a far away problem in China. Fast forward five weeks to the 15th of March, and just 24 hours before our planned departure, the South African government declared a state of emergency and said that all visitors from Europe would be banned from midnight on March the 17th. We were probably one of the last flights to land, arriving just 11 hours before the deadline. Talk about cutting it fine. The journey to Heathrow was not without its problems, such as trees on the line between Bournemouth and Brockenhurst, but eventually I made it to Oxford, where Bob met me in his super quiet Tesla, and we drove to the Red Lion in Little Missenden for a farewell lunch with our friends Richard and Nod. Then a taxi took us to Heathrow, and a comfy lounge Bob had booked with all-inclusive food and drinks. The Ethiopian Airways flight was packed full with masked passengers on both legs from London to Addis Ababa and from there to Cape Town. The view of Table Mountain as we approached the airport was spectacular. I also noticed quite a number of BA jets on the tarmac. I wonder how long it'll be before they're able to fly again. We were computer scanned on arrival but all went very smoothly and we were soon in a taxi on the way to our apartment. The Airbnb listing looked great. Harbour View Apartments. Somehow the reality wasn't quite as good. We overlooked the railway line and there were people camping opposite. I felt we should be sending them food. For £311 per week we had a fairly basic kitchen come lounge, a washing machine but no TV, and two bedrooms with no windows other than a skylight from the kitchen. Never mind, it was only to be for a few days. Having sorted out the apartment, our next job was to go and pick up our hire car. And I have to say, here I was getting a bit excited. Back home, Bob owns a top-end Tesla, which is a fantastic car to drive, and I was just eagerly anticipating what he might have hired in Cape Town. We passed all these exotic showrooms with uh, Mercedes, Ferrari, Lamborghini, even, even McLaren have a showroom here. So I, I, my mind got a bit carried away, I'm afraid to say. So, what exotic 
wonderful vehicle did we finish up with. Uh, well, you can see it in the background there. Rent a cheapy? There were some compensations. We got to see a wonderful Harley. I don't think you'd rent one in England. Okay. I'd be very surprised. Yeah, well, um, it's. I mean, they are going for about 1,600 a day, yeah. um, which is a little bit more than the vehicles that we're currently renting. Almost five to ten times more. And then the smaller ones are like, let's say it's about roughly 600 rand. That's UK money, that's about 80 pounds, isn't it? Yeah. That's pretty good.
Sunday was Bob's birthday and amazingly a couple living in a apartment just opposite the boat overheard Bob talking to somebody on the phone mentioning it was his birthday and they brought him a cake which I thought was really really wonderful absolutely made the day for him no, no, we're fine. Well, we, we've just poured a drink, but we can chit chat with you. Oh, Thank that you. is very thoughtful. Oh, no, 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 uh, well, candles aren't essential, so they don't sell them today. Uh, well, if I had all the candles that I did, we'd need five uh, brigades to buy. You know? <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's yeah. wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah you... that makes your day. Hey, cherry on the cake. Yeah. <laughs> and Schwarz from the Kirsch doctor. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I know there was black forest. There was the Germans called black forest scatter. Yeah, it's one one of those sort of old fashioned. Oh, nice. Drunette and I then cooked Bob his favourite Sunday morning fry up. My first attempt at a fry up on the boat with Drunette's egg toast and a bit of bacon. The kitchen's a mess. Following which, we watched the local seals enjoying their Sunday breakfast. A little bit sad for all the little fishies there. Poor little things. Celebrating Bob's birthday. If you're so bored at home, you've got nothing better to do than watch me rambling on on this video, you might like to subscribe. If you log into YouTube and subscribe to Tony Toller, T-O-L-L-E-R, you'll then get automatic updates on all the following, hopefully, many, many chapters. I'll play you out of this episode with a little video of a fantastic little local bar we found. The Casa Bar, which was very near our apartment, full of South Africans, locals, all lovely people having a great time. Unfortunately, it was the last day before the lockdown, so since then they've been closed, but we wouldn't have missed it for anything. See you next time. Kasaba. Very nice. Very South Africa. See you.